Well, here we are at Jones Family Farms. This is the big dairy barn. This is where the winery's tasting room is located. You can see we have the panel open there. And we're on the back side here with Terry Jones, sixth generation here on the farm. Uh, that would be fifth. Fifth generation, you're right. I'm sorry, I jumped the gun there. <laughs> our son is the sixth, our grandchildren are the seventh. But this is one beautiful, beautiful building. Lots of history. Actually, as we approach, here's the old foundation for the silo that lost its roof in the 1938 hurricane. 1938 hurricane, the silo lost its roof. Yeah, huh. flew, went away through the fields. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, you can still see the uh, the foundation remnants here. Well, we're going into... But I, I would add that the silo was obviously repaired. It was a Unadillo silo. What uh, is an Unadillo well, silo? Well, it was one of the more famous silo manufacturing places in Unadillo, New York. And uh, after the dairy herd was uh, sold in the mid-1960s, a few years later, my father took the silo down and recycled the uh, planking uh, to use in a in a added room to Forest Hall, his residence, his residence, and became the iconic Forest Hall of his residence. Oh, okay. For the for the ceiling, it was beautiful, beautiful. Uh, actually, it was fir wood. Fir. You know, things are always recycled. That's a that's a good so, thing. Yeah. Well, here we are coming into. Yeah, look at um, this. this this chain is probably a hundred years old. I I do recall your father Philip remarking about this chain um, that he remembered it when he was a kid, and he he was born a hundred years ago. So yeah, so here we are. This is the haymow. Let me turn on some lights in here. A lot of memories in here. Yeah. Look at this ladder. You say, well, ladder to nowhere. Yeah, that, that ladder does go to nowhere. Why, why would that, that be? Nowhere was the top of the stack, the mow of hay. So as we filled the barn throughout the haying season, and it got higher and higher, the only way to get up to the top was to use the ladder. So you've answered a question for me that I had earlier. What is a hay mow? That's the place of storage in a barn, obviously the upstairs. Yeah, the, uh, the wagons uh, early on and eventually the farm trucks would drive in here and it would get uh, either in the latter years with a hay conveyor, the bales would be moved up, but earlier where it was all loose, it had to be thrown. There were a set of forks, that four forks that dug into it, and there was a winch, and it would be lifted up to that track and then run laterally to, uh, and then dropped. So the barn was built in three time periods. The part where we're standing was first in the, around 1870. 1870? Yeah, that's the original part midstream here. And then in 1910, the south end, we always called it the South Mow, was added. All right, you can see the South Mow is um, a little bit different in construction. Oh yeah, you can look up and see, see the differences. Of course, the old part was uh, timber frame pegged together. Then the family had hoped in the uh, early 1930s to expand, but the uh, dire financial condition of the 1930s, the Great Depression, precluded that. So it wasn't until 1944, I believe, that the North End <coughs> was added. So 1944, and you can see the difference here in the construction as this area here with the timber frame was the initial portion of the barn. 
and then in the 1870s, and then this style of construction. It's called a balloon. Balloon, balloon frame construction. It, almost like a, a roof truss put on its side. So that was done um, by Jerry Glover's grandfather, uh, Glover and Regan. Uh, and further demonstration of the frugality even then, the planks, the roof board that are white, are white because they were part of the concrete forms for the uh, foundation. And waste not, want not, they were recycled. Sure, and used. especially during the Depression. Well, this was after but, well, the Depression, but, but still, uh, why not? Sure, use it. Yeah, it was a good one. And you so, probably noticed the acoustics here are fantastic. Uh, they are. You're, you're barely talking to me with a whisper. Yeah, well, uh, anybody who's uh, performed here, any musician, has just been, well, uh, they've suggested we should have a recording studio here. And obviously because you've got all this wood, different dimensions, different angles, and it just keeps the, uh, the, resonance the sound is resonating just, yeah. beautifully. So the one reason we're up here is because this is going to be the location for our group tastings. Yes. So as you can see, we've got some of our wine bars that uh, used to be down at uh, the pavilion, the timber framed pavilion that we have. Uh, these are all from wood trees cut here on the farm. These slabs, whether it be tulip or, or pine or... They're mostly pine and it would have mostly been planted by uh, my father, who, as I said, was born 100 years ago, uh, 1980. 1918, and Philip Jones was uh, born. He loved wood, and uh, he ran a sawmill for many years, and uh, wound up sawing up a lot of the timber that he himself planted and took care of. So that's a measure of an amazing uh, lifetime of loving the wood. Absolutely. And he started the Christmas tree business, by the way. Yeah. Great visionary. Pioneer. Well, this is a, uh, a beautiful setting here in the barn as we think about all the memories that have been created here by uh, family members and all the work that's been done up here. And uh, um, this has been the, the site of uh, your two children being married as well. Yes. Um Lots of great memories of that. That was an incentive when Jamie and Christiana were married to uh, get it cleaned out. <laughs> <laughs> well, now with the winery, we're putting it to great use. Oh, absolutely. So it'll be exciting for guests to come and uh, experience the setting of this barn for themselves. If they've been to the winery before, you have never been up here in the Haymow. So we'll look forward to seeing you at the farm and at the winery. So long. Take care.